All right, we're back with Walt Augustinowitz. Now, Walt, the main reason why we had you on mm -hmm. the show is because we criticized you in the past because you ran for uh, Republican Executive Committee Chairman. What do you see the role as the chairman being? Do you see it being different than how it's been in the past? Did you want to take it in a different direction? Well, I, I feel that the, you know, the Republican Party itself needs to make sure it's supporting uh, you know, candidates that are, are right down mainstream conservative values um, it, it, and spend more time. It, you know, I, I don't like the way uh, it seems to be now that uh, it's just anybody with an R after a name, we all have to support them if they're running with the R. Um, then no one can say anything bad or anything against them. And sometimes there's candidates out there that probably um, may not be the best ones uh, running. And I'd like to see even if the party be more active in, say, county politics as far as getting the commissioners, the, the ones that we know are you know, Republicans as well, to uh, uh, work with us on things like reducing the budget and spending more time giving them ammo, what thing, you know, being helpers to them. And, that kind of thing so that we can get things passed, uh, you know, reducing the size of government. I, I think what I picked up from your speech was very different than the way that the, the, the chairman in the past have operated. I've talked to past chairman and current chairman, and, and they say they really don't have any influence or control over the elected officials. They work for them, not the other way around, and that what you talked about is trying to shape an agenda with the mm -hmm. elected officials as chairman. They said it's just not, it doesn't work like that, that they're not going to listen to them. Do, do you think the chairman could play a role in policy? I absolutely think the chairman could play a role in policy. Um, I mean, we're, you know, the, the party is their base of support. Um, if someone, right now, the only way to really run and win office is running as a Republican or Democrat because you need that support behind you. Um, I think we can't be, a, you know, we can't say we're Democrat, we're not going to pull our support from someone, even if they're already elected, if they're not following Republican principles. I think, uh, you know, and that kind of threat over the head will keep, them following the reasons why they're getting elected and if we find that people just aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing we can't be afraid to criticize them in public we can't say we won't criticize any of our people because then we we may end up with everybody in power but they're not doing what we wanted them to be there for so why even have power if you can't do that i mean we had uh, you know the house senate presidency everything in the beginning and we still don't have a permanent tax cut what happened there and that's right. where the parties, well, that I think. happens at the local level, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we know that just because you have an R next to your name doesn't mean you're necessarily a Republican right. or adhere to Republican principles. So I see what you're saying there. But um, the, the other main reason why I was critical mm -hmm. of you, because I, I felt that you're, the way that, the, because of the way mm -hmm. that you had gone about it, that it was done in a stealth, stealthy way in terms of, mm -hmm. I didn't see your candidacy coming, and, and right. as somebody that's pretty involved in politics, I kind of wanted to know a little more about you mm -hmm. before you ran for chairman. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of the people in the room liked what you had to say, but mm -hmm. didn't know a whole lot about you. Um, am I off base in that in terms of have you been more active with the Republican Executive Committee, or is this something that you've decided to just jump into? Um, I actually, the, the thing is, is uh, and I'd like to kind of get this out there, is what really happened, because there's really no stealth involved. Um, I actually have a form here I could show you, but uh, where I actually applied to be on the REC last January, a year ago. Um, and, uh, you know, I filled out the form exactly like I, I was supposed to. We had everything in there in writing and uh, went into the REC meeting where Eric Robinson wouldn't give me uh, or my wife. Chairman. He was the chairman at the time and he would not give us an up or down a vote. And that's actually in the Republican Party of uh, Sarasota um, Constitution where everybody who qualifies gets an up or down vote. Um, he wouldn't let uh, us even in there to get an up or down vote. So at that point I figured why even bother coming back until they have to let me and that's where I, I did it for the election. You know, I, we went and you know, signed up so that as of November, as long as no one opposed us in their precinct, um, me and my wife would be in as uh, precinct members. And we actually had to jump through hoops with that. We sent our paperwork to, uh, um, to Eric at, to the address that the Republican Party of Florida had, and he actually mailed it back to us in an envelope, um, you know, resealed it and didn't put his name or address and sent us our, our loyalty oath back. So that we, you know, I guess to say we didn't qualify in time or something, but uh, we shouldn't have to jump through hoops to get on the REC. And, and were there other people that, that, was this kind of an orchestrated effort where you had a lot of the Ron Paul supporters who supported you for chairman were also trying to get on the REC in the same way and were having trouble doing it? Or Well, I would say, um, you know, as far as I, I, way back, you know, in January, I'd say later on, there was probably a few other supporters that tried to do it, but... Um, but I, just so you know, um, you know, at that uh, election that night, there was only nine other people that I knew there. Um, I got a lot more votes from that than, than those people. Close. Right, which means that a lot of people that were there 
either maybe are Ron Paul supporters and haven't told anybody, or uh, you know they just liked what I said because I didn't even bring up Ron Paul's name uh, during the, you know my speech. I told him what I was really about, you know, about smaller government, um, you know, lower taxes, more personal freedom, that kind of thing, and uh, it. Uh, you know, it resonated in the room, and those were, you know, it wasn't a bunch of stealthy Ron Paul people, because the nine people that I knew of had been trying to get on the REC for months and months, and, and Eric would not let anybody else join. And I want to encourage anybody out there who wants to be on the REC, if you're a Republican, no one else is in your precinct, fill out the pay it works, they have to give you an up or down vote. I would yeah. like to see more people there. We just got about 15 seconds left. Uh, wh wh what are your plans for the future? Um, well, I, I plan on, yeah, I plan on, you know, now that I'm a member of the RC, attending all those meetings, um, talking to more people and getting more people to, to support my ideas of the, the county, um, the, the politicians in office have to account to their party. Okay. Well, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's do our Weasel of the Week. We couldn't choose just one. There were two that qualified, and so we were going to do both real quick. First of all, Stacy Carr, her boyfriend was holding their baby when they were in the middle of a pitched battle in the living room. Stacy Carr decided she was going to take the knife that she had and go after her boyfriend and slash him anyway, despite the fact that he was holding their baby. Ended up slashing the baby on on the face. Uh, Stacy Carr, that's uh, that's not good. Uh, you're, so you're one of our weasels of the week. The other weasel of the week is Mike Garrett. Michael Garrett uh, is a uh, stole money. His 82-year-old mom had a stroke. She was incapacitated. She gave him power of attorney, and over the next 30 days, he basically stole $80,000 from her. Did a reverse reverse mortgage on her house and sucked all the money out of that. And she her house went into foreclosure, and she was broke. And thankfully, Michael Garrett is going to prison. So those are the two weasels of the week. How can you choose between those two? They both qualify. Next week, we're going to do a great show on the school board. we got school board member Frank Kovach. We're going to talk a lot about the school budget and next year's uh, and some of the issues in the school system. That's Clout 941. We'll see you next week.